Welcome back to The Bible is Art, where we explore the literary artistry of the Bible. And this week, we're talking about the story of Zacchaeus in Luke 19. The story of Zacchaeus is one of the most well-known stories in the Gospels. But when you read it, there is a strange information distribution. Now, what's information distribution? Well, one of the helpful things that you can do when you're trying to understand a story, especially a well-known one, is to look at how much information is devoted to each major section or event or character in the story. The purpose of doing this is to see what the author actually focuses on, what he wants us to pay attention to. Because if it's a very well-known story, our attention naturally gravitates toward the part of the story that are most popular. So let's look at the information distribution in the story of Zacchaeus. The story of Zacchaeus is short. It takes less than a minute to read. So let's read the whole thing. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And look, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, ha the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The story consists of ten verses. Seven of the verses happen outside with the crowd, with Zacchaeus running up in a tree and coming down and the crowd grumbling. Only three verses are the conversation between Jesus and Zacchaeus. You could say the moral of the story. So we have a strange amount of attention on Zacchaeus' action and the tree. I mean, why have all the stuff about the tree anyways? Couldn't we just have a conversation in the house, Zacchaeus telling Jesus that he'll give away a bunch of his stuff, and Jesus saying that salvation has come here? Well, one of the fundamental features of great art, whether it's architecture, music, or literature, is that all the parts work together to make the whole. All the parts, the sentences, the words, images, contribute to the main thesis of the work. So there's never a shape or node or image that's not serving the goal of the work. So let's look at the craft of Luke and how these images and actions contribute to his message. Luke opens the story, if you remember, like this. He entered Jericho and was passing through. Jesus has just about finished his journey to Jerusalem that started 10 chapters earlier. And just like the journey of Israel in the wilderness ended with them passing through Jericho, so Jesus passes through Jericho. But this is not a little detail to fill out the scene. Luke is showing us that this Jericho scene is parallel to the Jericho scene in the book of Joshua. In both Jerichos, you have a hostile group of people, the crowd here, and the inhabitants of Jericho in Joshua. And in each story, there's one exception, one convert, one faithful and unexpected one, a prostitute, Rahab and Joshua, and a tax collector here, whose home will be the place of their transformation in both cases. Notice, the Canaanites are parallel to the Israelite crowds here. Israel has be, been Canaanized and needs to be reconquered. But this time, the warfare and the weapons will be different. Luke then introduces our main character, Zacchaeus, with a set sets of conflicting attributes. His name means innocent or pure, but he's a chief tax collector and rich. The tax collectors were, were well known for taking more than was just. So perhaps his mother named him innocent, but that innocence must be gone. And second, he was seeking to see Jesus, but he was short and there was a crowd. 
our second conflict that needs to be resolved. Now, why are we told about his height? Luke is setting up a parallel between Zacchaeus' two problems, his wealth and his height, the two problems of the story. One of Luke's characteristic features is his attention to the poor and warning about the difficulties of wealth. And what Luke will do is present an allegory of Zacchaeus' wealth through the little vignette of his height in the tree. Let me show you how. Here is the sequence of actions. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. He can't because he's short and the crowd is preventing him, so he climbs up in a sycamore tree. Interestingly, when he gets in the tree, the narrator does not tell us that Zacchaeus sees Jesus, but that Jesus sees him. And it is at that point that Jesus tells Zacchaeus that he must go to his home. Zacchaeus then excitedly comes down to Jesus. Now, instead of bringing us right to Zacchaeus' home, the narrator tells us about the crowd's reaction. Luke tells us, And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone to be in the guest of a man who is a sinner. Notice, the crowd sees something, something that makes them grumble. Every character in this story sees something. Zacchaeus is seeking to see Jesus. Jesus sees Zacchaeus, and the crowds see a man's hospitality to a sinner. Luke is implicitly asking who has accurate sight. Zacchaeus appears to be a sinner, but Jesus sees him correctly as a man with hospitality and generosity. Zacchaeus overcomes his height, and the crowd, too, properly see Jesus. The crowd sees both Jesus and Zacchaeus incorrectly. Notice how they describe each character. The crowd says, he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. They're characterizing Jesus as a sinner who eats with sinners, and Zacchaeus as a sinner. And they are wrong on both. Zacchaeus will tell Jesus that half of my goods he gives to the poor, and if he's defrauded anyone of anything, he will restore it fourfold. And in response, Jesus will say, Today salvation has come to this house since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So far from Jesus sinning with a sinner, Zacchaeus is a righteous man, and Jesus brings salvation. What the crowd sees as a hindrance, sin, was actually an act of salvation. What Zacchaeus had as a hindrance turned out to be salvation, his height and wealth. Both his height and his wealth were the means of opening up, we should say, to salvation efficacious acts of salvation, but actions that help to bring Jesus, his salvation, to his home. His height helped because that's how Jesus ended up seeing him. His wealth helped because it both helped save others from poverty and saved himself by giving it away, reversing his vocational vice. In the previous chapter, Jesus will say that it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven, and Zacchaeus has voluntarily impoverished himself. The crowds take no action, but Zacchaeus takes tons of actions. The narrator gives Zacchaeus seven verbs, ran, climbed, hurried, came down, received joyfully, stood, and said. The crowd has won, grumbled. In a delicious irony, the crowds, Israel, are grumbling again. If you remember in the Old Testament, they grumbled at the giants in the land. Here, they are grumbling against not a giant, but a small man, an anti-giant. They don't see that the challenge of a giant or a sinner could be a blessing instead of a curse. That is what Zacchaeus sees with his wealth and his height, a challenge to be overcome, transformed, saved. So it is the crowds who can't see. Notice the contrast between Zacchaeus' seeing and the crowds. Zacchaeus is taking action to see Jesus, even in light of his physical and social problems. He's short and there's a crowd. All they see is Jesus going to Zacchaeus' home, 
and even that they see incorrectly. Zacchaeus can't see and changes it. The crowd thinks they see but can't. Far from Jesus partaking in sin, he's declaring providing salvation. Specifically, Jesus says he's doing two things, seeking and saving. But back to Zacchaeus' height and the tree. His height corresponds to his wealth or role as a chief tax collector because that prevents him, in the eyes of the crowd, from being with Jesus. But Zacchaeus knows his height is a problem, so he is diligent to run and climb to overcome it. He takes action, just like he's diligent to use his wealth and position to improve his spiritual condition. That is, he uses his wealth and position to give half of his goods to the poor. Furthermore, his problem, small stature, allowed him to be seen by Jesus, just like when he reduced his wealth, it will not be a detriment, but will actually benefit him. Becoming small can be good if you need to fit through the eye of a needle, a story that was told in the last chapter just a few verses ago. Now, let's zero in on what Jesus says. Jesus said that salvation has come to this house since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. So Jesus says that the Son of Man came to do two things, seek and save. He sought Zacchaeus in the tree and has saved him because salvation has come to Zacchaeus' house. And what has come to Zacchaeus' house? Jesus, whose name means Yahweh is salvation. Okay, but there's one additional detail that we haven't dealt with, the sycamore tree. Notice, Luke has not just described it as a general tree, but a particular kind of tree, a sycamore. Why? Interestingly, the word sycamore occurs seven times in the Old Testament, and I believe that Luke is alluding to the last instance of it. It is in the prophet Amos, and it occurs in Amos chapter 7. And here's what it says. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. Now you may be thinking, what does that have to do with this story? But take a closer look. Amos is saying that he was a strange, completely unlikely selection to be a prophet because he was just a sycamore dresser. Notice, this is the same thing that happened with Zacchaeus. He was a completely unlikely selection to be prophet, someone who would communicate God's word as well. He is a tax collector. Not only that, but a chief tax collector. And yet his words are recorded in the Bible like a prophet. And it is his words and actions that serve as contrast and condemnation to the crowds of Israel. A tax collector has become a prophet. So this small man who saw well has become a stumbling block for Israel. This strange prophet became a sign and a word because salvation came to his home. And that, my friends, is why the Bible is art. Thank you everyone for watching this week. Um, I really do appreciate it. This is a, such a fascinating um, one to work on. Uh, you know, I've read it a million times, but sometimes when you give uh, careful attention to something, it you know, unfolds itself to you. So um, very cool. Um, if you would like to support the channel, I would love it. You can do that at uh, patreon.com slash the Bible is art. If you've got any questions, leave them below. I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a, um, a thumbs up, like, um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.